Kia ora to Thank you for um, joining us physically here in the room and for those of you that have joined us online to come along and celebrate um, Ian's uh, somewhat unusual, but it's the world we live in, 50-year uh, um, celebration. So we really, um, really appreciate it. Um, the normal uh, things as we normally talk about where the toilets and the escape routes are, those that are here in the room know that. Um, but we can add, please, for those of you online, um, can you just ensure that you're on mute um, throughout, please? Uh, several of you will be, a couple you'll be speaking, but if you can remain on mute, please. Okay. Thank you very much. So, um, welcome, mate. Good to see you come along. Karen, welcome along. Um, we're here to celebrate in uh, 50 years of service. So, that 50 years started um, in Timaru. Um, the story is sweeping out the stables and keeping the horses warm, and that. I'm not sure that may be a story I've told myself over the years and it's in my head, but anyway, it was a very long time ago. And it's featured such uh, destinations as Dunedin, Wellington, NHQ, um, and of course um, now in Tauranga, Rotorua. So the career has spanned um, a lot of places, a long time, and Ian has contributed significantly all over that period. And you're going to hear a little bit about that contribution as we go throughout. Um, and others that will come and speak um, will detail that in more detail. I've got a little note here, I didn't introduce myself. No apologies. Nor Brendan Nelly, top of the um, So my name's Brendan, I'm the Deputy Chief Executive for People and I'm the MC today, apologies for that. Right, so uh, some of those features of that career, um, there's many, many significant things, but probably in um, my mind, the first thing that came when I wrote my notes is um, Ian's role in the Christchurch earthquake recovery as incident commander of the uh, day shift, um, a role where I said um, a prime prime seek to see him exert his, um, his uh, well-renowned leadership style as I was uh, operations commander during that time and worked for him. So it was um, it was an interesting, challenging, amazing, harrowing time. Mm. And um, and when I think about Ian's career, that's the um, the very first that thing that jumped um, jumped out at me. Um, probably a highlight of Ian's career was when he realised he was going to get me as his RMA, um, a position that I didn't take up. I got offered a better chance, a better opportunity. But um, anyway, after the Christchurch earthquake, um, Ian and I worked together again. He was the regional manager here in Wellington, and I was the area commander in the Hardwire Rapper. And that was um, a short period of time because I only lasted nine months, on um, which um, I really got to know you, and it was um, a great period of time. But Ian and I have known each other a, a lot longer than that. In fact, the first time we met was when he sacked me back in 1995. <laughs> I didn't do a very good job. So I'm not sure. I've got a little bit of highlights and lowlights here, and I couldn't I couldn't put what, which category it went in for you, mate. But um, that was that was one uh, part of it, and it, and it's ended now here where we're working together in the people branch. Um, I out of the time, if you can. Uh, Bear with me. I remember a meeting when I first met Karen at the time, a comms centre operator, and um, I was in Ian's office here in NHQ. I, I can't even remember what we were talking about or what we were doing. And um, Karen, you walked in, and Ian jumped up and said, Oh, now's up. I'm glad you're here. I, I really wanted to introduce you to Karen. This is the one. And I thought, <laughs> And you looked at me and said, Don't worry about that. And I thought, Oh, yeah, you're going to last. So, um, Karen, that was, that was my first recollection of meeting you. And it's been awesome to get you know, know you over over that time, and then you changed from prom scheme into HR and into the role you're in now. So it's been really awesome to get to know you as well over all this time. And of course, you and I are going to stay as colleagues um, for much longer yet, I hope. Um, I think probably a tough time in um, our careers was um, down south, um, dealing with um, a regional manager at the time that was down there. Very early on, and um, that was a, uh, that was an experience. We didn't experience it at the same time. I, I had the same experience, but much later than Ian. But um, that, that's another experience that I think of that we've got in common, mate. Um, and probably in the in the other challenging areas is the infamous um, the dairy versus supermarket um, incident. And I just wanted to say that uh, one of the highlights of my career, things that that, um, that I'm really proud of is when um, we were able to rectify um, what I saw as a uh, wrong 
during during their um, separation. So I won't go into the details, but several people know what I'm talking about here. Um, Ian has done an incredible job with workforce capability in these latter years. Um, he's, he's built a, a really effective team there um, in training um, and uh, are great people doing a great job. And in this organisation, it's very easy to blame training for, well, pretty much anything really. But um, I'm really proud of the, uh, the work that's done. It's, um, it's travelled a long way. There's new innovations coming. Uh, there's new approaches and particularly the adaptation to what's happened in the COVID world. So Ian's led their team incredibly well and um, I'm really, really um, amazed and appreciative um, of what you've been able to do there during this time because it's been an incredibly difficult time as um, with training um, as a big beast and um, we've had to um, change and adapt like everyone else but it's, but it's been a challenge and we've done it and Ian's led that. And at the same time, he spent two years sitting with Chris and I in bargaining, um, which has been a challenge. And um, and I really appreciate that you've, you've done that to support me because it's, it's a pretty lonely time sometimes. And um, so I really appreciate um, the support you've done through all that with our, our three, um, three bargains that we've been working through over the last two years. All in all, before I hand over to people that are much, uh, will say a lot more wiser things than I, I just say, to me, it's 50 years well served. Um, that you've shown pride for the organisation, you've shown passion for our profession. Um, you, you've demonstrated a personable and really supportive leadership style, which I personally have experienced and enjoyed and grown because of. And that's my memory of you, Ian. You're an amazing individual leader. Right. I better kick off the formalities, eh? So, um, can I invite you? Um, <coughs> Rhys, um, I'm going to introduce Rhys Jones, the Chief Executive of Fire and Emergency, to the podium. Thanks, Rhys. for me to kind of start talking about Ian because he's a person that I really hold in such high respect. Um, I remember the very first time that I went up to EGC uh, and was just taken through in a very calm manner uh, the environment which we put our firefighters through. And I think Ian is really the epitome of what uh, a strong leader, a calm leader, a thoughtful leader is in that emergency environment. Someone who knows the business someone who understands the people and the, and the pressures they're under, uh, but someone who is, it remains calm, remains clear, gives that confidence to the team. And as a chief executive coming up, and that calmness that you actually gave, uh, that understanding of you're over this, you understand what needs to be happening, you've got a great team under you, you know where we've got to go as an organisation. That gave me great confidence that uh, the biggest investment that we can make, which is in our people, is in the right hand. As I've come to know you and I've talked to various people, I've started to know the background and the experience that actually brought you to that particular time. Uh, and for me, you know, from that uh, similar service background, understanding how important that experience is that you've walked that walk uh, is to, to someone who takes on that role. And the responsibility that you've taken on to make sure that the people in this organisation were the right people with the right skills and the right attitude during the right role. So uh, your particular contribution to that has been absolutely amazing. So I want to personally thank you for that. Um, and of course, uh, behind every person um, is a strong family, often neglected kids. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because of that uh, we go through. Um, so yeah, I do also want to recognise uh, the role that you've played uh, as a family to be able to allow Ian to focus on his, his focus. His needs that he's had to be in that particular role. So it's really great to surprise him uh, by being here today. And you've always been on the other side. Uh, as far as I've known, you've always been on the other side. So I think you've been a great team uh, and to be able to support them. So for me, uh, can I say uh, it's been wonderful to know you. You've always had my confidence. And I think the, the manner in which you have actually given that guidance and that sphere uh, to the team that you control, the team that you were guiding 
that really put us in a really great spot. Um, and I wish you all the best. Because you've certainly put in your 50 years of life and investment has, has really shown dividends. And there is a saying by Kipling, it is, you know, if you can, uh, and I won't go through the entire thing, but it ends up, if you can fill your minute with a minute's worth of running, you know, then that's where you can be satisfied. You've filled your minute, you've done everything possible you can. And your influence in this organisation uh, is just so powerful and so memorable. So I really wish you the best. Thank you, Thank you. Thanks, boss. I had intended um, commenting on the uh, unexpected reunion last night, but the salt, the language was too salty, so I had to, I had to skip over it. So thank you, boss. I really appreciate you giving up some time to come along. So it's my pleasure now to introduce um, Kerry Gregory, the um, VC Service Delivery and the CE in waiting. Kerry. Namahi kia koutou and namahi e ho. And um, I say to you, Ian, you know, it's a real honour for me to be here today to um, to um, be a part of this whole thing. And, you know, for me, you're a friend. I've been a friend for a long time. And um, I mean, both of you, I've just, I don't know when I first met you, but it was so long ago. And I just look around today, you know, it's, it's really bizarre, like under the COVID environment when we have these sort of things. But, you know, those on the screen may or may not know, but I see nine faces, I think it is, and there's a plus 215 people on the screen. You know, pretty much all of ELT are either on the screen or here. We've got the president of the NZPFU here. You know, there's a real, you know, through management, coming through those layers to where you are today is a real sign of who you are, how you operate, and the contribution you've made. So, you know, there's, um, I was just saying Ian before, there's not many career firefighters who do 50 years. You know, you're one of a really small bunch. And, um, you know, that's a real honor to you and what you do. Your family, you know, it's, um, it's interesting, like, you do, you know, there's, there's quite a few people who do a lot of years service. Most of them sit in our volunteer um, side of things. And so when you talk about family, it's about, you know, you're not there when the, when the bells ring and you, you, you miss things and all those sort of aspects of it, but also, you know, in the management roles, you know, there's a huge commitment to operate at that level. And that comes with the support of your whanau, you know, and they have a certain amount of loss. But, you know, what I always say is, you know, never underestimate the commitment that you give to New Zealand by allowing Ian to do what Ian's had to do for the organisation. Sometimes that gets lost and you see, you know, the, you see the front line of, you know, of what our people do, but it's actually that back line that actually supports our people to come out and do those sort of things. So thank you to, to all of you. Um, I guess too, you know, as I, as I stand here today, I look back and I think, thinking before, when did I first meet Ian? And, and um, I came to the conclusion that I couldn't remember. It was some time years ago. Um, but I've worked for Ian. Um, Ian's worked for me. And, you know, I think there's, there's some people you work for and you, you learn different things off them and different approaches. And you think, oh, I really like that or I don't like that. You know, I'd say Ian is one of the leaders that I've worked for, that there's so many traits that he has that I've modeled my leadership style off him um, to get to where I am today. So, you know, I, um, I thank you Ian for your service for 50 years, you know, an incredible amount of service. I thank you for your friendship, and I thank you for all those things that aren't necessarily seen in the organization of the influence that you've had over those many years. You know, there's so many aspects when you look across you know, you're not just your input into training, but you know, what you've done through the USA, through UNDAC, um, you know, the, um, the relationship holder for the Pacific um, and those things. You know, I know um, down in Christchurch, you know, how, how challenging that was at times. <laughs> and you know, I think, you know, as you look back on your career, you know, you'll be able to be really proud of some really key moments and things that you've done through there. So yeah, again, I congratulate you. And, um, you know, I can't give you high enough accolades for what you've contributed to us over 50 years. And that's over the time that I've known you, let alone the times before. Um, I was going to say before I was born, but not quite. Awesome. Thanks, Ed. Thank Thanks, Karen. And thank you, Fana. Presenter, a very close friend of mine. Um, uh, John Rowe, who's uh, currently a VSO um, serving here in Wellington, but um, I know him as a 
firefighter in the Wellington district when I was here. So John, I'd like you to come up and represent the uh, Wellington Fire Brigade, uh, Gold Star Association. Thank you. Can just help us get started? Thank you, Brendan. And uh, I do have to say, when I looked up there and saw, oh, there's only 204 on here now. It's got to be the biggest uh, crowd I've uh, presented uh, the Gold Star Association stuff too. Um, distinguished guests, uh, Fire Emergency New Zealand staff, fellow firefighters, Ian and Karen's family, ladies and gentlemen. Generally at this stage, we're welcoming Karen and Ian into the Gold Star Association and telling them about the association. But as you'll know, that would have been done 25 years ago. So as to not cover old ground, we welcome you to a very unique group of membership and status and look forward to spending this special afternoon with you and Karen as you join a handful of members who have served for 50 years. Our president has asked to pass on his congratulations to you in uh, achieving this milestone and have a card there to present to you in, in his recognition of that. Um, also, I'd like to present you with an updated Wellington Provincial Gold Star Association rule book. Do you think I've forgotten this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's much so. Much so. Um, also, I know you're going to be doing a lot of travelling by the sound of that, but please, if you can pull out that information, it just gives us contact with you so that we can let you know what's going on in the so association. Because one thing we do do, and I'm very proud of, is the fact that we do get the uh, members all together and we have a uh, get together annually and uh, our annual conference, so it would be really cool to see you at some of those. Interesting fact of the Gold Star Association that it's only 55 years old, so it's in its beginnings when Ian actually originally, originally joined the New Zealand Fire Service and then into Fiends. On more of a personal note, um, when I was a young whippersnapper firefighter, I think about 30 years ago, stationed at Kandala, it was the pinnacle of fire stations. Sure. I, th <laughs> <laughs> I think at the peak of our, our years up at Kandala, I think the most amount of calls we had was 105 calls a year. Unbelievable, and I'll give it a, a, give it a reason that uh, one guy for tonight we were on duty, and the entire Wellington Fire Brigade were just a total mess around there. And here's Kandala 271 sitting on the apron at the forecourt there saying, and Com Centre calling up, is there any spare appliances in Wellington? And our officer says, yeah, Kandala 271, available. Roger, is there anyone else available? <laughs> <laughs> there, there, I think, and my theory was that a lot of diplomatic residencies and embassies up around that area, and we had to keep them protected on the hill. Anyway, uh, I was there for, uh, for a number of years, uh, stationed up there on the, the Mighty Reds, and um, I had some pretty inspirational leaders um, people come and join me um, as my senior station officer up there, guys like Trevor Brown, Owen Woodman, pretty special guys, and then this one turns up as my senior station officer at Kendala. We had fun, it was a great time. But every time I went to Brendan and says, um, to, to Ian, sorry, every time I went to Ian and said to him, you know, I, I need help with this, or what do you think of this, Ian? And he'd say, I don't care, I'm out of here in a couple of weeks. <laughs> now, I wasn't sure whether it was out of Kandala or out of the organisation, but look at this, he's still here 30 years later. So well done, well done on that. To mark this occasion, um, Ian, I'll be shortly presenting Karen with a 50-year brooch, and for that I'd ask Rochelle if you could come up and do that on behalf of yeah. the association. Yep, come on up. <laughs> no, no, she can present that to Karen. Thank you, Roy. And uh, 
So Ian, I present you with your 50 year tie. You've probably yeah. got a tie of three ties now, probably a five service one year, 25 year one now, 50 year one. And I wear them a lot. And you do, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. And uh, brooch, a uh, uh, pearl badge for you to wear in your, with civili civilian clothes. Thanks, John. At this stage, we normally ask all um, Gold Star members to be upstanding and, 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 and have a toast and congratulate them, but because we haven't got uh, the normal night thing environment with having a toast, I just want to say for everyone out there in, um, in, in the land that's zooming in on this um, that I'm sure you'll all have some fantastic uh, things to say about Ian and we'll rise up and, and do a toast to you Ian in, in due course. So again, congratulations mate, well done and it's been great knowing you. Thank well you. Thank you, Carol. Uh, just while you were speaking and, and quite rightly you talked to um, the, the commitments the family have made, I just wanted to I found myself thinking, wonder what it's going to be like having them home 100% of the time, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to cross to the, the wonders of modern technology. Oh, look, we just popped over 220. That's awesome. Um, the wonders of modern technology. And uh, there he is. Uh, kia ora. I'm going to introduce um, a really close friend of many of us here in the organisation. And it's so good to see you again. But Paul McGill, uh, Deputy National Commander, retired. It's really good to see you, Paul. And hopefully our comms work. And achieve their objectives. Fire emergency serves people in a very practical way, and Ian has a deep understanding of practical and technical matters. Personally, he could turn his hand to almost any practical skill. I guess it started with his trade background and he became a very capable operation firefighter, metal worker, woodworker, builder, painter, gardener and cook. He's combined his practical knowledge with his extensive studies and qualifications in fire engineering, business studies and leadership. And this is a powerful combination for a leader in fire and emergency services and one of the reasons he has achieved so much in his career. Ian is also a good all-round sportsman and loves to travel, so I'm sure he'll have no trouble filling in his time in his retirement. I think he balances work and home life well, which is demanding, but your level of responsibility. He clearly devoted to Karen, who is a great support for him, and his children, Nicole, Simone, and Jake, and his grandkids. And I'm sure Ian would appreciate now having more time to spend with his family. Talk about time, Ian is very punctual, and we've had some fun over the years with me trying to catch him out for being late. Unfortunately, I don't recall ever doing it. He's always been early, or just when I was getting my hopes up, right on time. I sometimes wonder if he stood outside the door with a hand on the handle and swung it open on the second. Anyway, I haven't given up here. There is still time, and you're going to have more of it. In conclusion, we can't replace someone with Ian's combination of personality, experience, and skills. Rather, we just have to be grateful for his service, our association with him, and for how he has inspired so many others to emulate him. Congratulations again, Ian, and I wish you a long, happy, and well-earned retirement. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Kia ora, Paul, and it was um, really good seeing you again, mate. Oh, it's great. Um, uh, Tim and Harold, come back to me before you go to item six, please. Um, but just before we get Sarah to join us, um, you probably would have seen there's been quite a few messages popping up in support. I'm not sure if everyone can see those online, but just recognising those of you out there in, in the internet world that are uh, banging in the messages there. So thank you very much. Yeah. Now it's my great pleasure to uh, introduce another friend of ours, a um, friend of the organisation, friend of mine. It's really great to see you, Sarah. Um, mostly known to Norm, uh, to everyone around here. But Sarah Stewart Black, um, the Secretary General Sorry, excuse me, the Secretary General of New Zealand Red Cross. Sarah. Hola. Tēnā koutou katoa ko Norm Sarah Stewart Black Aho. It's my absolute privilege to be able to take play, uh, to be able to participate in a special event to share in Picard's considerable contribution, particularly in the area of United Nations disaster assessment and coordination. Ian, or Picky, as I know you as, um, although my, this morning I was talking to my daughter and she thought I called you Pickles, but that may be the next nickname for you. Um, but 
Ian has been a member of the United Nations Disaster Assessment and Coordination since September 2004 until stepping down in June 2020. This 16 year commitment was during my time at the then Ministry of Civil Defence and Emergency Management and also walking alongside as a fellow UNDAC member. For those that are on the call that don't know, UNDAC is a role that requires the expertise of experienced emergency managers to be made available for deployment for missions at short notice. And this is into countries that are impacted by a large scale emergency. So this is a global opportunity to go in and provide direct support to an affected country. Undertaking this role provided Picky with professional development and disaster management and coordination, both in capability building opportunities, exercises and deployments. It also provided him the opportunity to represent not only fire and emergency in New Zealand and previously the New Zealand Fire Service, but also the New Zealand government uh, abroad. During his time as an UNDAC member, Ian participated in numerous training and exercise opportunities and has supported a number of deployments, both within uh, the Pacific, but also Southeast Asia. So in terms of, just to give you a flavor of this, training and exercises, um, the International Search and Rescue Advisory Group, which provides that real consistency standardization of methodology around urban search and rescue, He's been involved in regional exercises in Nepal, 2009, Malaysia, 2013, China, 2014, we were there together, I remember, uh, and also in consolidation courses in Japan in 2015, was actually the UNDAC representative in the national exercise, Exercise Kangaroa, in New Zealand in August 2016, refresher courses in Korea and Sydney. In terms of his deployments, he was in the cyclone response in Bangladesh in 2007, typhoon in the Philippines in 2009, and tropical cyclone Winston in Fiji in February 2016. Ian's expertise, professionalism and commitment has been both displayed in both the training and deployments and an ongoing engagement when we've been progressing UNDAC as it relates to the New Zealand context, it made him a hugely valuable member of the New Zealand UNDAC team. The sense of humour, warmth, care and personal resilience, even when facing considerable pressures, was remarkable. And just for an opportunity to really bring it home to him and everyone listening, I recall a nasty tummy bug that Ian experienced after a deployment, I think it was Bangladesh, that played out on the long haul flight home from Bangladesh following that deployment. And if that doesn't give you a sense of personal resilience, um, I don't know what it does. I won't describe in any sense of imagery what played out on that long haul flight because I'm sure that many of you on this call will understand what I mean. But it was a measure of his perseverance in getting through the flight and much much later, he was able to apply his sense of humour to it, but not right at that moment. <laughs> While you may have blocked out the trauma from that flight home, I want to reassure you, Picky, that I've retained that story for just this occasion. So I've just, I just want to bring that, bring that home to you. I would like to acknowledge Karen, and it's lovely to see you, Karen, I haven't seen you in ages, and your support to Ian for that contribution to UNDAG. Unlike exercises in, um, and deployments that might happen here in New Zealand that can sometimes be quick turnaround, for UNDAC, they were always longer. They were always weeks at a time rather than a day or individual days because of the distance needing to be traveled. It meant that he was often away from home, that the deployments came at short notice and were highly disruptive. And it's only possible for Ian to have done those things with your incredible support. So I just want to acknowledge and thank you for that. Ian, just to really wrap up here, I just want to say that your expertise, professionalism and commitment that, that you have displayed throughout all of those interactions in the international space, whether it's been training or deployments or meetings, and your ongoing engagement here in New Zealand made you a highly valuable member of the New Zealand UNDAC team. 
and a real representative for not just emergency management and for fire and emergency New Zealand, but also of New Zealand, of us nationally. I'm incredibly proud of the contribution and commitment that you demonstrated throughout the 16 years. And it has been my absolute privilege to have known you, um, going right back from your first engagement in UNDAC. So I just want to say thank you on behalf of all of the kind of UNDAC whānau. Um, it's this pretty small group, but also in my previous role as Director, Civil Defence Emergency Management, thank you. It's a massive commitment and you form part of that history of who we are in Emergency Management New Zealand. Kia ora. Thanks to the sector for giving us a few minutes to come and talk to his, um, his great mana. So I really appreciate it. It's really good seeing you again, Norm. Thank you. Um, Norm touched on all those. I was just reflecting on all those countries you went to with UNDAC and then I was thinking about all the countries you've been to, you and Karen have been to on the cruise ship, that pre-COVID means of transport. Um, so the list of countries that you're allowed to visit, given those ones are taken off, is quite small now. So I'm sure you'll, yeah. I'm sure you'll get around those in quick order. Australia. Um, rightio. Um, so it's my great pleasure now to um, to welcome to the podium um, Ian Wright. Ian is um, a senior station officer based here in Wellington, um, but he's here in his role as the president of the Professional Firefighters Union. So Ian. <coughs> Thanks very much, Brendan, and thanks everyone, and um, uh, thank you, Ian and Karen. Um, I had written down a little bit of stuff to um, to say, but most of the, most of everyone has said it. Um, I've been fortunate enough to know Ian for a very, very long time, um, both uh, on the trucks. He was uh, an SSO of mine on Brownwatch at Trentham Station back in the early nineties, and uh, the the. People talk about having fun on shift. Yeah. We had a bit of fun on shift. <laughs> okay, that's enough now. Yeah. <laughs> no more stories. Um, and and of course uh, through when I was the you know the Wellington local president uh, secretary and now the, the president of the firefighters union. Um, if you know if there's if there's one word or a series of words that could describe Ian, it would be effortless and a leadership. And, and both of those interchangeable throughout his whole career and throughout the whole time that I've known him, the way he effortless, effortless, effortlessly is able to uh, cross the borders of um, the, the, from the newest recruit right through to the CEO. It's, it's, just, it's just a dream. He's, he, if you can follow anybody, anybody's footsteps and how to behave and how to, how to interact with people and how to build relationships, it's, it's follow what Ian's that what Ian does. That's what I try to do. So, you know, it's, um, so, you know, you engage, you build relationships, um, you understand the importance of relationships and um, you've always done the right thing. You know, if you, you've always done it. You live, you are the living embodiment of Ian's values. Um, I can't say that enough. Um, of course, you know, he's been around a long time, we all know that, but, but all, Right through the 90s, 96, the mass sackings of 98. You know, um, I wouldn't want anybody else to deliver me a sack notice. <laughs> <laughs> Did it so <laughs> nicely. Ask <laughs> Brenda sure was that yeah. great an experience. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I mean, no, no, really difficult times. You think we've got difficult times now. That was incredibly difficult. And yet, Ian still maintained the ability to remain human and to be compassionate. And above all, put the um, the welfare of his people and the organisation as a whole uh, to the forefront. That's what he's always done, and um, probably to the expense of his wonderful children, Ned and um, and Karen. Um, right. He talks a lot about his, his, uh, his um, times in Timaru and talks fondly about this time in Timaru, but he also talks fondly about his time where he got promoted into Wellington, you know, probably the best promotion into the best brigade in the country. I don't remember that, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, so he's formed, you know, I'm lucky enough to call in a, a personal friend, a very, very close personal friend. 
and a, and a professional friend as well and colleague. You know, we, I may be in the union, but it, you know, I've got the same goals. I, I operate under the same values that Fins has and that Ian has, and that's why we've always got on well together. Um, so we're going to miss you, and the organisation will miss you when you, and, uh, uh, when you re finally retire. Um, they're truly good boots to fill. So thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers, man. All right, thanks. Um, M was operating the principle that um, us older firefighters all do, that which is mutually assured dis destruction. So we don't talk too much about things we did when we were younger firefighters. Um, so, yeah. Um, listen, it's uh, also my great pleasure now to introduce um, another friend, friend of mine, uh, um, a gentleman I've known for a long time, Russell. Um, Russell is a Chief Fire Officer in, in the South Island in Alexandra, but he is here representing the United Fire Brigades Association. And um, we've got a little bit... Of, are you there? Oh, yeah, there you are, Russell. I'm not sure I'm looking at you, Bex. I might want to turn your camera off, but... Um, cool. <laughs> <laughs> The swimming pool in the background. <laughs> That's our way of just relaxing you into it, Russell. But um, I formally introduce um, uh, Russell Anderson, uh, representing the United Fire Brigades Association. Russell, the uh, Rako is yours. Thanks, Brendan. Uh, distinguished guests, and thank you for the opportunity to be part of this uh, virtual presentation for a 50 year medal. This last year has taught us all to be adaptable to the change in our working environment, just to survive and move with the current state we find ourselves operating in. From the very first schedule of this presentation back in October the 9th, how much has changed in our operational environment that we're working in? It's certainly a first for me, and I guess if we're not prepared to adapt, we get left behind and waiting for the world to reset in the way that it was, or at least the way that we remember it. And if this were to be true, we'd be waiting a very long time. But not so long ago, of course, it was impossible to achieve a 50 year medal, as the joining age coupled with the compulsory retirement age meant that 49 years was the maximum service you could obtain. Thankfully, that criteria has long since been abandoned, and we are seeing more personnel qualifying for their very well-deserved and well-earned recognition of service. I consider this opportunity, opportunity to be an honour and a privilege to have been asked by Ian to make this personal presentation to him. So on behalf of the current president of the United Fire Brigades Association, I thank you. And I only wish I could mark this significant milestone by being there in person to present you your medal. We've heard a lot of stories about Ian, and I, um, a lot of people um, trying to remember the first time that they met him. Now, I guess my memory might be better than some of them, because I met Ian in 1995. It was after a fire service restructure, and I think Enix did a job down in Dunedin as, I believe, a district manager at the time. I could be wrong. I was a serving police officer and a senior firefighter in the Port Chalmers Volunteer Fire Brigade. Surprisingly enough, it was a meeting in the police bar on the fifth floor of the Dunedin Central Police Station. I think also present at the time was Paul McGill, Stu Rooney. There were other police personnel there, and I believe Stephen Hill, the Chief Fire Officer of Port Chalmers, may have also been in attendance. In preparation for this presentation, I googled in just to get some info. Of course, I stalked them on Facebook, and every picture that he has on Facebook is either eating or he's drinking. Mostly the latter, I must say. So I guess our meeting in a licensed premises was no surprise to his closest of friends. And just hearing the others say about his uh, nickname of Picky Pickles, maybe Pickled might be a more appropriate uh, nickname for him. But Ian appointed me to the role of Chief Fire Officer in Alexandra in 2003. I think at that time he may have been promoted to an Assistant Commander of Operations. 
And I think it was a promotion he may have had some reservations about. The very same week, I was appointed as the Chief Fire Officer. Our brigade was hosting the Otago Southland Provincial Water uh, Fire Brigades Association Conference and Waterway Competitions. My opening address to the conference delegates, I started my speech with an extremely funny joke, as all of my jokes are. However, as we know, Ian has a slightly different sense of humour than the rest of us. He felt that my joke was inappropriate for the crowd to live it to. And he made a comment to me that maybe I could be a chief fire officer with the shortest tenure in New Zealand history. I'm hope hopeful that that decision he made uh, has not caused him too much concern, sir, and that it is one he is happy with. Of course, while I was searching for some uh, information on Ian, I talked to some colleagues from the indoor basketball scene. Ian was a strong competitor in the indoor basketball social side of the competition. And he has been described by some of his colleagues as fiercely competitive. You know, I guess uh, only those on the court will know what that means. And I'm sure there are a lot more stories that could be told about Ian and I guess that is better suited for a more appropriate time uh, under a social environment. As we have all heard, Ian started his journey with the New Zealand Fire Service with his initial posting to Timaru. That was back in 1971. Until he transferred to Wellington in 1988, and seven years later he shifted to Dunedin. And this forged him to who he is today, I believe. Half Cantabrian, partially Hurricanes, but mostly Highlanders. <laughs> and it has truly been a pleasure to be your friend and to have worked alongside you and being appointed as Chief Fire Officer by you. You have worked really hard in your life. You deserve this retirement to be with your family and your grandchildren. And I thank you for your service and your commitment to New Zealanders and the support that your family and your friends have given you over your 50 years. I will now ask Kerry Gregory if he could come forward, remove your 25 year medal and gold bars and present your 50 year medal. Congratulations Ian, well done mate. We've also got uh, two plaques here, and I'll just read them out. So um, one's for Ian and one's for Karen. And um, 50 years service. This service, this certificate is awarded to Ian Martin Pico of National Headquarters in recognition of 50 years of dedicated service to your brigade and com community. Completed on the 11th of August 2021 on behalf of the UFBA. And Karen, 50 years service. This certificate is awarded in recognition of support given by Karen Pickard to Ian Martin Pickard of National Headquarters during his 50 years service on the 11th of August. Congratulations to you both. Russell and I saw through uh, modern technology you're clapping your hands remotely there so um, thank you very much um, now the um, the next stage we're just about getting to the end to write a reply but um, mm -hmm. before we get to that um, on behalf of the board I'd like to call um, Chief Executive Reese Jones um, to the dais to do a presentation I do have a plaque to give from the board but before I do that I wish to read a message from Rebecca Cogan um, she's asked me to pass on her apologies. Unfortunately, she can't be here today. She's out of cell phone range at a prior engagement that she couldn't miss, her husband's birthday. Uh, and so she was pretty upset that she couldn't accommodate uh, both. However, she's asked me to say a few words on her behalf, which are, Ian has given, Ian has given remarkable service to fire and emergency. Um, 
serving all over the country, often in critical roles. Others here today will say more about his career, but I want to say that from the board's view, Ian is a shining example of why New Zealanders trust our people to provide help when it's most needed. He is immensely capable, decent, caring, and focused on helping other people and keeping our people safe. Ian, thank you for everything you've done over such a long period for the fire service, the fire and emergency, and New Zealand. Godspeed, enjoy your retirement, and I hope we get the opportunity to catch up down the road. All the best, Rebecca. Thank you. And so can I give this plaque on behalf of the board? It says Ian Pickard, in recognition of the extraordinary contribution of Ian Pickard to over 50 years of world service as a firefighter from 1971. Thanks, Rex. Thank you very much. Um, 50 years, yeah, it's a long time. I'm only going to spend a couple of minutes per year as I go through the 50 years, so fasten your seatbelts, buckle down, I won't be long. First of all, thank you everybody for those very kind words. Um, they're very humbling and I'm almost embarrassed by all your comments, stories and memories that we have all shared. But I'm very proud that I've uh, been in your, or that you've all been in my life in one way or another. I just want to get in really early and thank Tim and my very secretive wife for arranging this today. I thought I was going to walk out the door and get my medal posted to me. So this is very nice. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, last night, Karen suggested that we go for a quiet little wine and halfway through the wine, these two beautiful young women here walked through the bar towards me all the way from Christchurch. Um, I couldn't comprehend for a wee while what was happening. I was sitting there thinking, gee, those women look like my daughters. <laughs> and um, the, anyway, the emotion started and after we had an amazing night. So thank you very much for that. Unfortunately, our son Jake can't be with us today. He's isolating at home with COVID in the house, so he, he's back at home. And, and also, I just want to thank all those for allowing this to happen. Um, what, I think it must be the first ever virtual 50-year celebration that, in the country, and uh, maybe we're setting a precedence here for, for the future. Uh, but it's very fitting at this time, and, and I think hopefully it's worked, particularly for someone like me that's worked in nearly every fire station in the country at some stage. I'm just going to focus on the things that I'm proud of, and many of them have been said already, and I thank you for that, but I want to get you to hear my side of the journey. journey. <laughs> 50 years is a long time for some people's mind, and for me, it's been a great journey. And I've been overwhelmed with the number of people that have made contact with me in these last few weeks, and I'm so pleased that I've touched so many of your lives and helped with your careers. But more importantly, you must realise that how many of you have actually impacted on me, touched my heart, and made a difference to who I am today, and how I've changed over time as a friend, a colleague, and as your leader. So where did I start? It's been said. I was so thankful on the 11th of August 1971, following an advertisement in the Timaru Herald, that I signed an employment agreement with the Timaru Fire Board. I'm proud to be a firefighter, and I'm proud that I was operationally responding for 24 years with real life experiences. I'm proud that a number of firefighters that I work with on the trucks are still my close friends and I value their love and support. And one of them has been my best man twice, so how good a commitment of that. <laughs> Thanks, Roger. In 1988, I transferred from Timaru to Wellington, and the Wellington impact on me was immense. Ian, thank you for bringing that up. Operationally, it was quite a huge difference from operating in the small Timaru Brigade, the small Earth Timaru Brigade of the Wellington City. And I went through all the ranks and was lucky enough to be acting divisional officer in 1994 when that role was dis disestablished. Prior to me even arriving in Wellington, I've been working hard with the Central District's Joint Committee of Management on the needs that we had for the well-being and care and welfare of our people. And eventually we were able to establish the first Firefighters Welfare Society, and I was appointed as the very first chair of that board and stayed and served for over 30 years on the board in a whole lot of different roles, and I'm proud to where we are today. In 1995, we talked about there was a restructure and I got appointed the Chief Fire Officer, Russell, of Dunedin City Central. And I went down there and to meet the, uh, the uh, area management team of area manager Tony Dryberg and a young assistant area manager called Paul McGill. The times were very tough through those 90s, yet those next six years I learned so much about myself, about people's behaviours and just what genuine leadership is all about and what you can achieve with it. In 1997, another restructure, as uh, Russell pointed out, and I, I got the role of Assistant Fire Region Commander Operations for Southern Fire Region. This is where I learned quickly about volunteerism and the best approach to how to lead and influence volunteers. 
And it was during this pe period, as Russell said, that I first met Russell Anderson. And thank you so much, Russell, for being here for today. It was an honour to, to have you uh, say the words for the UFBA. 2001, we got a new Chief Executive National Commander, all the way from Aussie, a guy by the name of Mike Hall. And it was in just the year, following year, in about 2002, that the Director of Operations then and Training, Paul McGill, and the Chief Executive asked if I'd come and be part of a project for Station Management System, the introduction of it. Uh, eventually in 2004, I was appointed as Director of Strategic Development here at National Headquarters and become the business owner for station management and business planning. And at that time, the Business Roundtable had a go up at, at us about we need to be more strategic in our planning, far more strategic in our day-to-day -day activities, and far more strategic in our reporting. So I, I toured the country for a number of months, assisting and driving business planning down to station level. And that's where we first started introducing it to, to the SMS system. So that was a, a long time ago, and we know the system's probably ready for a bit of a fresh now. Uh, in 2004, one day, my call come flying into my office in the flat and said, I've been asked to go for a dinner with some McDem people and that tonight with international guests coming from Inserag. Have you got anything on? Can you come with me? So I went to, to dinner that night with Mike, and I got sat beside this lovely lady by the name of Linda Ang Angus. Linda turned out to be, at that stage, one of the roles, I think, similar, similar to what Norm was doing later on as head of the news in McDem of New Zealand Undac and Insurag. She got through some introductions and then she reached over to, to Mike Hall across the across the table and said, hey Mike, have you thought or done anything about getting a New Zealand Fire Service person involved in Undac? Mike said, oh yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that next week, I'll get back to you. So then she turned to me and she said, what do you do? And we had a bit of a yak about my short career and everything and she said, would you be interested in doing Undac, but you've got to be ready to go to China in four weeks time. And I go, I'm on. I'm on <laughs> so she reached back over and she said to, hey, Mike, don't worry about it. Ian's going to do it. So that okay? <laughs> and Mike said, oh, yeah, okay. And that was, that was so I've had an amazing career in the United Nations with the United Nations. And as we said, uh, uh, to, to so many countries all around the world. 2008, I became the fire region manager for what was known as Arapawa, which was the top half of the South Island and this bottom bit of, of uh, the Wellington Hutt Valley. And then eventually become the regional manager for Region 3, as we know it to, to it today. In 2009, I got sent with the UNDAC team to Typhoon Kitsana, based in Manila, where 710 people died in that typhoon. And I was given the privilege of leading an UNDAC sub-team up to the North Philippines, and I had to get it in there, Karen. We were based at a city called Tugugarao. Um, and uh, during that, my time up there, we were involved in a bit of a head-on smash, and Karen got a phone call to say, we know your husband's been in an accident. We think he's okay, but we'll get back to you when we find out. <laughs> that was about that. Uh, one of my other highlights in 2010, and I know I'm rushing through this because it's nearly five o'clock and people want to go and have a drink, but in 2010, I was sent down on the day of the second explosion at Pike River to take command of the incident, the Pike River Mine Disaster, and become the incident commander. For 15 minutes, I was the incident controller um, for that um, when I arrived down to Greymouth, the then Commissioner of Police handed over and said, the mine's on fire, Ian, we would like you to now take command of it. It's in New Zealand Fire Service's hands. And uh, you'd go in and meet up with Gary Knowles, who was the inspector in charge of police at Greymouth, and he'll hand over to you. Uh, 29 people, of course, died in that. By the time I drove to the Greymouth Police Station, then the government had stepped in and said, we're not calling a recovery anymore. We're still calling it a rescue, so it's staying in the hands of the police. So for about 15 minutes that I drove into town, <laughs> I was in charge. <laughs> But I stayed on as the commander in, uh, for the New Zealand Fire Service. 2011, I was lucky enough to lead and drive the area realignment project. And then 2011, the Christchurch earthquake hit, and I was very proud again to become one of the incident commands of the day watch there, and also to be deployed for the first time with my wife, who was de sent down there as the welfare officer. Um, during my time down there, of course, you know, I went on a couple of shifts. I had this young operations manager called Brendan Nelly. And he got to meet some of the Prime Minister's relatives. Yep. We'll tell you about that sometime, no, not today. <laughs> um, and, and then back in 2012, I was asked to lead the region realignment project when we were going from eight regions down to five. And then I was, in those stages, I was appointed this new young and upcoming uh, commander to be my project manager, a young man, apparently had a great future for him, got the name Kerry Gregory. And I think he's gone on to do, do all right for us. Uh, 2014, I then took up the role of training programs and NTC manager for a number of reasons. And then uh, again in 2016, I went with Undac over to Cyclone. Um, on 1st of July 2020, I started as the National Manager of People and Workforce Capability. But my time in training, I keep saying, was the most enjoyable and, and area I've ever worked in, the most, where it was the most uh, 
highest energy and people that really want to make a difference. But now the journey is coming to an end as I retire in a couple of weeks time and uh, I've completed the 50 years. But most of all, why am I still here? It's all about you. It's all about the people that I work for and, the, and, and all of you that have had made it, my career so fantastic. I have hundreds of friends across the country and I have had interactions with and the teams that I've worked with across the country have all been amazing and made my career so enjoyable. Most of all, I'm so proud of my family. My extremely patient and secretive wife, as she may be, Karen, thank you, and our three children, Nicole, Simone, and Jack, Jake, and their partners, and our seven grandchildren. Thank you for your support and your unconditional love. You've given me and supported me in this amazing journey. But it's so important that we all recognise when it's time to move on. And I've recognised that for me, it is my time to move on. I really want to welcome Mark into the role and wish you all the very, very best with this amazing group of people that you're going to be leading. I'm ending my career living in paradise at Papua Beach by the, by the sea, with our pool, my garden, and I'm extremely proud of what I've achieved in my life through today. And I'm walking away knowing in my mind that Fire and Emergency New Zealand owes me absolutely nothing. I've had an amazing career. Yeah, there was a few bumps, but my heart, my mind are filled with pride, happiness, and thankfulness. And I wish you all the very best for the future. And if you're ever up in the Bay of Plenty, Karen and I would love to see you. Thank you all.